Hit it. Oh! <laughs> oh! Hey everyone, Jerry Mitchell here. I've got a really fun video, a lot of Smith & Wesson history right here, guys. So stick around. I think you're going to enjoy this presentation. So what I have in front of me is a bunch of Smith & Wesson K-Frame 22 long rifle revolvers. If you want to learn how to shoot, get you a good 22 handgun and get out there and burn up a lot of ammo. And that's one thing about these handguns, they'll last a lifetime. And I got really something really special to show you. So stick around and I'll give you, I'm a, it's going to be fun. Stick around. Okay, we're going to start guys. We got a K-Frame here. It's a model 17. This is a 17-4. I probably bought this 30 something years ago to, to train with. It's been a great gun. It's a six shot, six inch K-frame blued steel revolver. I'm not a great fan of blued steel, but they sure do look good. Louisiana and blued steel just don't go together really good. But anyway, super handgun. And what I have in front of me right here are some current manufacturer K-frame 617s with 10 shot cylinders. Uh, this is one I've shot a lot of steel, steel challenge practice with. I do a lot of shooting with 22 long rifle just to keep the finger in shape. It's cheap ammo. You can get out there. You can have a good time. Just a little bit of money. Of course, got a 4-inch also with a scope mount on it. But let me show you a 617 that you've never seen before. Give you an idea. We were down in Florida. Boy, this is a long time ago. Maybe 20, 25 years ago or so. We were out uh, working a Smith & Wesson promotion. And we went out to dinner. And the guy sitting across the table from me was one of the plant managers in handgun manufacture. And somehow or another, we, come, we were talking about 22s. I said, hey, man, why don't you build an eight-shot cylinder for your K-frame revolvers? And he said, well, Jerry, we've got a, I've got a 10-shot cylinder in my desk at the office, and there's no interest in it. I went, mm, no interest? I, I can't, yeah, this is America, man. We want, we want more ammo. So anyway, I convinced them to put that experimental cylinder in a K-frame, and here it is right here, guys. That he built two cylinders. These were pretty much hand-built prototypes. Five flutes, ten, ten charge holes, and you notice the notches here, the cylinder stop notches, are way bigger than the, the standard production guns. This was a prototype gun. At that period of time at Smith & Wesson, I was doing a lot of demos, shooting demos around the United States, so I'd bring this thing around and do a little show, dog and pony show with it, and people would see a ten-shot revolver. I even brought it to England. I shot it in Bisley, England. When, when those guys could still have handguns back in the early 90s. i give you an idea how old it is. But anyway, great gun, 10-shot stainless steel cylinders. So they started making these originally with an aluminum cylinder, and they soon found that didn't work, so they recalled them all and replaced them with the cylinders that you see here with 10 flutes stainless steel for the 617s. Great guns, guys. You can shoot them till you're tired of looking at them. It's going to be extremely hard to, to wear them out. But give you another Smith & Wesson K-frame here, guys. This is a five-screw. And give you an idea, we were, we were working this promotion in Florida, and I had the privilege of being with Mr. Roy Jenks, who is the Smith & Wesson historian, and he's also responsible for me being hired by Smith & Wesson back in 1990. So he was forming a professional shooting team, and back at that time, I was beating the top pistol shooters in the United States on speed matches with a Eight and three eighths inch model 27. So I'll give you an idea how long that, that that was ago. I could actually shoot without corrective lens. But anyway, Roy started a professional team. I got hired on. There was five of us on the team back then. But what was interesting about this 22 revolver, I think I've been in a pawn shop three times in my life and once was with Roy Jenks. For some reason, we were in Florida and we passed the pawn shop and we pulled in, walked through the door and right on the right side of the case, First case I see is this 22 revolver laying in there. Of course, Roy Jenks, who is the Smith & Wesson historian, he's also the president back then of the Smith & Wesson Collectors Association. So I said, Roy, what do you think about that revolver? So we took it out of the case, and he looked at the serial number. Of course, Roy knows serial numbers like uh, birthdays. He said, well, this was made in 19 blah, blah, blah. And, and he said, that, yeah, I, what, I, what I was concerned about, the finish of the gun didn't look correct. Because if you looked at this Model 17, it's kind of a bright blue, and this is kind of a matte finish. He looked at, yeah, that's, a, that's the original bluing. And he said, uh, he asked the gentleman if he could take the grips off the guns and off the gun, and we did, and it matched the serial number. So the grips, or the diamond 
grips that were correct for this period of manufacture. The finish was all original. And as you can see, it's probably an easy 90, 91% gun. It still has the tag on it from the pawn shop. 260 bucks. So that's my Roy Jenks story. I know what you're thinking. You got to top this story. I even got a better story for you. <clears throat> so we're moving on. Check out this little box here, guys. This is a pretty sweet gun. And this was sent to me by Mr. Kenneth Winchell. He texted me a while back and he said, look, I've got this Smith & Wesson K-Frame 22 revolver. It's a really nice gun. I really don't know what to do with it. I know you're a gun person and you would give it a good home. And I said, well, I'm pretty crazy about Smith & Wessons. He said, well, I'm going to send it to you and you go ahead and shoot it and have fun with it and give it a good home. So he did. He shipped me this 22 revolver. Give you an idea what this one is. You can tell whoever owned this gun really loved it and took extremely good care of it and made a little presentation box for it. But it's a five screw K22. It's the K22 Outdoorsman. This was manufactured in 1935. And if you look at it, you can see the bluing on it was just exquisite the way the sights are made. It's just uh, got a little silver bead on the front sight. And this was made in 1935. So this was during the Great Depression. Money was tight. I'll give you an idea what this gun sold for. At I think it was distributor. Dis yeah, the distributor price on this gun was $24.41, guys. That's to give you an idea how much your dollar has shrunk since 1935. So whoever ordered this gun back then wanted the best there was, and he did. And one of the things Roy Jinks offered, and I think he still does, if you send in your serial number, and I, I don't know what he charges now. I think at one time it was 25, 30 bucks. It might be 50 now. But anyway, what Roy does, he has all the company records of where, when and where these guns were manufactured. And, and this particular K-22 Outdoorsman was made in, or should I say it was shipped out of Smith & Wesson factory on March 25th, 1935, and it was delivered to W.A. Harvey Sporting Goods in Syracuse, New York. They might even still be in business. So that's what Roy Jenks offers is a, uh, a very detailed description of when the gun was made and who it was shipped to. So, and it's, of course, through Roy Jenks, who's the company historian, kind of a neat concept you can research sale numbers so Kenneth sent me this fine i say super this thing has a single action notch on it it just wants to shoot if you look at it just sitting here it just says classic bullseye shooting that's what a lot of these guns were used for has a super really fine single action on it i don't think this gun has been shot hardly at all uh excellent condition and i know what you're thinking Let's go ahead and play with this thing. Let's take it out to the range and see how far to do, how far to shoot, and give you an idea of what we're going to shoot for ammunition today. Go ahead and make, yep, yeah, we empty, put it back in the box here. And what, what we're going to shoot for ammo today in this fine 22 outdoorsman, I've got some Fiocchi official 320 ammunition, guys. I don't know if you've ever had a chance to shoot their target grade ammunition. And what the 320 means on this match ammunition is meters per second. It's made overseas and, and uh, it comes, it used to come in four, at least four different velocity ranges, a 310, a 320, a 340, and I believe a 300. So if you had a picky gun, you could find a velocity range with that 40 grain match bullet that would give you super accuracy. So we're going to take the 320 out. They also make the standard hollow points and the solid round nose and the subsonic rounds and what have you. But we're going to take the super match ammo out. And we're going to try to shoot some steel 200, 200 yards away. And I know what you're thinking, guys. Let's go have some fun. Okay, so we're out on the range, guys. We're at 200 yards. I've got a balloon set up. I've got that 1935 manufacturer K22. And what I'm going to shoot for ammunition today is some really nice ammunition. This is Fiocchi. It's their target grade. It's their, they call it their official 320. So when you see this brand of ammunition, what that number means on the bottom, is meters per second. This is an extremely accurate target round. They're making it a 300, a 310, a 320, and I think it goes all the way to 340 meters per second. So you can tailor the velocity and find exactly what load shoots good in your gun. I've got some 320. It, sh it shoots good in the other guns that I've used it in. So I'm just going to go ahead and try it. All right. I haven't shot this gun yet, but from what I know of it, it was a target 
revolver. So I would suspect it's sighted in at 50 with a 22 standard velocity, which is really close to this. So I'm going to take an educated guess and hold about five feet over that piece of steel, and we'll see if we can uh, get that balloon to ring here. So I'm ha I'm have to shoot it with both eyes open because if I close my left eye, I can't see the target. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Let's give it about look like five feet. Oh. I saw it hit low. All right, we have to go a little bit more than that. Let's give it about right there. Ooh, that wind is gusting. I think I like the elevation there. So let's see if we can uh, maybe the wind will play with us here a little bit. All right, the wind looks like it's our friend. Let's give it a little love. Hit it. Oh! <laughs> I tell you what guys that wind was blowing it was pushing me off the left side of that target the way to I see the wind here I thought I was gonna have to aim left but it actually was hitting left so there you have it guys 1935 manufacturer Fiocchi 320 Ooh, we got some hey that was <laughs> 1935 guys this thing shot the single action on this on this revolver is absolutely superb so what I was trying to figure for 200 yard zero and I was wrong because this actually 200 yard is that target frame there and the silhouette bank was at 200 meters so this is actually like 240 yards so my my guess of about five feet was off I had to do about seven feet and on the third shot we connected and the Fiocchi did his thing and what can I say better to be lucky than good get some